All right, so we're looking at the binomial distribution. We have to remember that a binomial experiment has a fixed number of trials, each with only two outcomes, all right? And these are the conditions of a binomial experiment. We only have two outcomes per trial. The probability of successes are the same across all trials. Number of trials is fixed and each trial is independent. So now let's look at our formula here. All right. N represents number of trials. X number of successes or successes All right p the probability of success on a single trial q the probability of a failure on a single trial All right then we have a combination here All right n c x All right so we've got an example here that we're going to look at and let's take a read of the example the pass rate for gce candidates is 60 percent out of eight gce candidates find the probability that at least two candidates pass six or seven candidates pass exactly four pass not find the expected number of students who pass and also the standard deviation of students who pass so if we look at the conditions of a binomial experiment and our question here in this question here we've got two outcomes either pass or fail pass or fail All right the probability of successes are the same across all trials in this case here our trials are the gce students so the probability of uh, the gc students passing is the same across all the students all right the number of trials is fixed we have eight students all right and each trial is independent meaning any student can pass and that won't affect the other candidate all right so now the first thing that we have to do when we'll say let x be our random variable which represents candidates who pass so say let x be the random variable right for candidates who pass Okay, this is a success in our, in this case, all right. Then our N, which is the number of trials, is 8, all right. Our probability of a success in a single trial, or the probability of a GCE student passing is 0 0.6, this is 60% here. Yes, yeah, so that's our our p right does so p equals 0 0.6 so if the probability of passing is 0 0.6 the probability of failing which is q is 0 0.4 all right so let's write so i'm going to say our random variable x follows a binomial distribution here we have eight trials and the trials are the candidates and the probability of the of the candidate passing is 0 0.6 now we can begin solving all right so the first thing so I'll say solutions here
Okay, so the first one, one find the probability that at least two students pass. I was going to say A here, probability that at least two, two students pass. Meaning we're interested in the probability that two students pass, the probability that three students pass, all right? The probability that four students pass, probability that five students pass, until you reach the probability of eight students passing. Now, there are two ways we can solve this question, all right? We can solve for all those probabilities from two, probability of two students passing to the probability of eight students passing, but that would be a long, that would take a lot of time, right? Since we are focusing on the probability that at least two students pass, so we do not need the probability that zero students pass or the probability that one student passes. We're just interested in two or more. So we can subtract one from the probability that less than two students pass. All right. Instead of so for the probability that two students, three students, four students, five students, six, seven, and eight students pass, we can just subtract one from the probability that less than two students pass. And that probability includes the probability that zero, zero students pass plus the probability that one student passes. All right. So we can now solve, let me just extend this. All right, so we can put in our formula, all right? Let's first fi um, let's find the probability that zero students pass and also the probability that one student passes. Then we'll add these probabilities and subtract them from two, all right? So we're going to say here it's going to be one minus, all right? So let's get our formula here for the probability that zero students pass. We we'll put here zero C first. Our number of trials is eight. Our X, this little X here represents zero students who pass, right? Multiplied by, so the next thing, our probability of a success is 0 0.6 and we raise it to the power zero because as you can see, you have to raise it to the power X. So we put here, raise to the power zero multiplied by our probability, the probability of a failure, which is 0 0.4, all right, to the power n minus x, n is 8, x is 0, so we say 8 minus 0, that will give us a, uh, 8, 8 minus 0 gives us 8. All right, plus, now we're focusing on the probability that one student passes, so we're going to put our C here, number of trials, 8, x equals 1, so we'll put a 1 here, we'll multiply that by the probability of passing by one student, 0 0.6 here, raised to the power 1, multiplied by 0 0.4 to the power, so here it's 8 minus 1, that's power 7, all right, all right, so let's solve the, let's solve the, for the probability of the zero students passing, we we'll start with our combination here, let's say, uh, we have 8, C, 0, this gives us 8 factorial minus 8 minus 0, or 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 0 factorial divided by 0 factorial, multiplied by 0 factorial. All right. 
right? So 8 minus 0 factorial, we get 8 factorial and 0 factorial here, right? So these factorials cancel each other. We have 1 here. Right, so 1 divided by 0 factorial. 0 factorial is equal to 1, so uh, have 1 over 1, which equals 1. So here we're going to put 1 multiplied by 0 0.6 to the power 0, that is 1, multiplied by um, 0 0.4 to the power 8. So we're going to get zero point zero zero point zero point zero 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 six six. All right. All right. This this tabulation has to be done by its on its own. We put parentheses here and also here. All right. So we have a parenthesis here. Plus, let's so let's solve this combination here. C to the power C eight C one. We have eight C and a one. So that is 8 factorial over 8 minus 1 factorial 1 factorial. So 8 minus 1, that is 7. So of 8 factorial over 7 factorial 1 factorial. We can simplify this. Let's get rid of the 7 factorial. So we say 8 times 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 1 factorial. The 7 factorials cancel each other out. 1 factorial is 1. 1 divided by 8, that is 8. Multiply by 0 0.6 to the power 1 is 0, 0 0.6. Multiply by 0 0.4 to the power 7. Multiply by 0 0.4 to the power 7. So 0 0.4 to the power 7. We get 0 0.0016. 0.0016. 1, 6. So 1 times 1 times 1 times 0 0.006, 0, 0, we get 0 0.00066 plus 8 times 0 0.6. I'm 0 0.0016. We get 0 0.0079. 0 0.0079. All right. So we add the probabilities. 0 0.0079, 0 0.0066 plus 0 0.0079. We get 0 0.00856. 0 0.00856. So 
I'm going to say 1 minus 0 0.00856. Get zero point nine nine one four. Zero point nine nine one four four. Can just leave it at zero point nine nine. So this is the probability that at least two students pass. Right? As they asked us here, the only the probability that at least two students pass two candidates pass, and that is our probability. And you just enlarge in the question, we go to the next part of the question. Now I want the probability that six or seven candidates pass. All right, so we're going to say for B, probability that six or seven candidates pass. So x equals 6 or 7. So this is going to go to the probability that 6 students still candidates pass plus probability that 7 candidates pass. Okay, so we can put our formula. All right, we have 8 c our x in this case is six so because we're first um tabulating for the probability that six candidates pass multiplied by the probability of a success 0 0.6 to the power six all right times 0 0.4 to the power 8 minus 6, 8 minus 6, that is 2. So we have 0 0.4 to the power 2. Okay. Plus, now the probability that 7 students pass, we're going to say 8 here, like this, multiplied by 0 0.6 to the power 7, because our x is 7 multiplied by 0 0.4 to the power 8 minus 7, that is 1. So 0 0.4 to the power 1. All right, so we can solve for our combinations. Okay. So 8 factorial over 8 minus 6 factorial 6 factorial 8 minus 6 that is 2 so we have 8 factorial over 2 factorial 6 factorial to simplify this we can get rid of this 6 factorial or you can just put this in your calculator so 8 fact 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 2 factorial 6 factorial, we get rid of the 6 factorial. So, 2 factorial, that's 2 times 1. So, we're going to suggest 8 times 7. Okay, we're going to say 8 times uh, 7, that's 56. 56 divided by 2. Because remember, 2 factorial, that's 2 times 1. So here we just have 2. 56 divided by 2, we get 28. Twenty-eight. Apply by 0 0.6 to the power 6. Zero point zero four seven Let's make our number shorter times zero point four to the power two 
0 0.16. Plus, all right, let's say of our next combination here. So I'm going to have eight factorial over eight minus seven factorial. And here we have seven factorial. Eight minus seven factorial, that is one, so we have one factorial. We have 8 factorial over 1 factorial, 7 factorial. So 8 factorial, we'll get rid of the 7 factorial. So 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial, 1 factorial. Code that doesn't matter here. Right, so this, the factorials cancel each other out. 1 factorial is 1. 8 divided by 1, that is 8. So we have 8 multiplied by 0 0.6 to the power 7. Zero point six to the power 7 gives us 0 0.027. 0 0.027. 0 0.02. Tell them around it off. 0 to 8 times 0 0.4 to the power 1, that is 0 0.4. All right, now we can tabulate. All right, so we say 28 times 0 0.047 multiplied by 0.16, we get 0 0.2. 8 multiplied by 0 0.028 multiplied by 0 0.4 we get 0 0.089 so 0 0.089 plus 0 0.21 get 0 0.299 okay which can be rounded out to 0 0.3 so we get once a 0 0.299 or 0 0.29 that's the probability that six or seven students six or seven candidates pass All right, um, let's see, we've got the next question. It tells us to find the probability that, we just zoom into the question here. Oops. the probability that exactly four students pass. All right, so we can see, let me solve it nearby here. All right, so the probability that four students pass, so that's part C, probability that four students pass. All right, we put this in our formula, we have 8 c 4 times 0 0.6 to the power 4 multiplied by 0 0.4 to the power 8 minus 4 that is 4 so to the power 4 all right we can solve for our combination here so we can say 8 factorial over 8 minus 4 factorial, 4 factorial, and will give us 8 over 4 factorial, 4 factorial. 
and then we can solve this this is going to be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial we end here because we want to get rid of the 4 factorial Okay, these factorials cancel each other out. In our denominator, we have, in our numerator, we have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Divided by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's do this. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Eight times seven times six times five, one thousand six hundred and eighty divided by four times three times two times one, we get seventy. We get seventy. Okay, this is going to equal to seventy multiplied by 0 0.6 to the power of 4 it's that 0 0.13 we don't want to be including a lot of decimal numbers 0 0.13 and 0 0.4 to the power of 4 that's going to be 0 0.0256 so just a 0 0.025 Zero point zero two five. So now we can multiply seventy times point one three times point zero two five. I'm going to get zero point two two seven. Zero point two. That's the probability that four students, exactly four students, pass. Now we we'll go to the next part. It asks us what is the expected number of students who pass? Very easy to get the expected number. So that will be part D. Expected number, which is the same as the mean. All right expected number or the mean is equal to the number of trials times the probability of a success the number of trials which is the number of candidates in this case is 8 the probability of a pass is 0 0.6 8 times 0 0.6 we get 4.8 All right, then part D. So the so the expected since we are talking about humans here, so four point eight we can round it off to five. All right, the expected number of students expected to pass is five. Then finally, the standard deviation of the students who pass to get the standard deviation. This is part E standard deviation sigma here with the square root of n times p times q so, all right so we're going to say 8 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 so 8 times 0 0.6 that is uh we already got that it was 4.8 then we'll say 4.8 multiplied by 0 0.4 you get 1.8 9.2 then we can get the square root of 1.92 square root of 1.92 that's 
1.38 to one decimal place. Yes, so that's how we handle binomial distribution.